So welcome to the, uh, I believe, ninth week of the Comatic Seminar. Today, uh, today we have uh, Targaid uh, from NTNU, and he'll be talking about uh, the Comatic Move Stem Sats. So Targaid, please take it away. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak at the, at the seminar. Um, yeah, the uh, chromatic null stem sets is like one of the more important works that has been published uh, in like chromatic homotopy theory over the last couple of years. So it's it's cool to be able to talk about this uh, this uh, this cool paper, in my opinion. Um, if you have any questions, and just uh, feel free to ask them. I can't promise I can answer anything because there are quite a lot of technical details and uh, and difficult things in this paper. Uh, but I'll try my best at least. Okay, so uh, the reference for most of things happening in this talk uh, is of course the chromatic Molson sauce paper, um, published last year by uh, Robert Berkland, Thomas Schlank, and Alan Yuan. And uh, I'll try to cover roughly these three uh, points. So first off, what is a null Stellensatz? How do you take the normal uh, Hilbert's null Stellensatz for uh, rings that we know and love from algebraic geometry and generalize it to a more, um, more applicable or more varied situation? And second, um, since we're going to try to use this new found generalized uh, null Stellensatz in a, another situation. We want some specific ones where we can test it. And this is uh, the um, theory of telescopically localized stable homotopy theory, uh, sometimes also called like monochromatic homotopy theory. And uh, in particular, uh, we're going to look at uh, commutative algebras in uh, this category, uh, which are kind of uh, telescopically local e infinity algebras. And we're going to uh, look at the proof of the null Stellensatz for this category. OK, so first off, uh, what is a null Stellensatz and how do you generalize it? So uh, recall the classical Hilbert null Stellensatz, which says that if L is an algebraically closed field and J in this polynomial ring over uh, L with the n generators, some uh, ideal, then uh, we have that the Oh, this was a thick. Uh, the ideal generated by the variety of the ideal, so kind of passing to um, geometry and then back to algebra, is the same as the um, the radical of the ideal we started with. So in some sense, this allows us to translate between algebra and geometry in a really nice way, and that is almost uh, an inverse to each other, up to like adding higher um, higher exponents of your elements. So if we uh, want to generalize this to other categories, this definition is kind of, or this theorem is kind of phrased in a um, difficult way. Uh, why? Uh, it uses equations and common ring, uh, roots of polynomials, uh, subsets and elements. And especially the common roots of polynomials parts is very difficult to generalize in um, in general, for example, infinity categories. Um, so we need some better way of describing this. And um, and we're going to try to like convert the statement into something that's easier to generalize. Uh, so the first thing we do is reduce this uh, kind of strong hilbert null stellensatz to the one uh, which is fallen from, uh, which is the weak hilbert null stellensatz So we recall that as well. Uh, we have an um, algebraically closed field L and some ideal again. And then this um, variety uh, of the ideal J is um, empty if and only if and the ideal is generated or is the ideal generated by one. It contains the unit. So it's the whole it's the whole ring. So it tells us that if we have a non um, um, like a proper ideal, then our variety actually has geometric points. This is kind of the statement. And this is, we're going to see easier to, to generalize. So we're going to do the following uh, quote unquote construction. So uh, we have some um, variety generated by an ideal J. This is non-empty. So J is a proper subset of uh, this uh, polynomial ring. Uh, and it's non-empty, so we can choose some element x, yeah, often called like a geometric point. 
some point in a variety is just a map from the point to the variety. We're just choosing this point x. And um, these uh, varieties, we can think about them either as uh, kind of in the um, uh, algebraic situation or in the geometric situation. So we have this equivalence between um, affines and commuted rings and the op category uh, corresponds to a morphism between uh, rings instead or algebras. And this is in particular, since it's up, we flip the direction. So we have gamma, which is the uh, global sections or coordinate ring, depends on what you like or what definitions you use. Uh, or it's the same thing, but the name depends. And uh, global sections of a point. This is just the, the underlying field that we started with, the algebraically closed field L. And this um, this gamma of V of J is this polynomial ring quotient by J. So we have a sum map between them. Okay, so this uh, is now more easily to, to generalize. We have more maps, which is uh, easy to, to use in general categories. So uh, points in this variety, V or J, correspond to common roots of polynomials in J. Uh, recall that J is a subset of this polynomial ring, so it consists of some amounts of polynomials. Okay, so we can reformulate the weak not sets into the following uh, theorem. So we let L be an algebraically closed field and J some uh, proper ideal of this polynomial ring. Then uh, common roots in J corresponds to maps between uh, L, this polynomial ring mod J and L. And these are maps of L algebras, if you want. So uh, this is um, a better statement that we can use to generalize. So um, a fact is that these algebras um, L, X1, Xn, mod J, they are in fact all the finitely generated L algebras for algebraically closed fields L. And we just kind of vary this uh, parameter N and this ideal J, and we get all of the finitely generated uh, L algebras. Okay. So uh, this is gonna show up in the, the more general definition later. So keep this in mind. Okay, so we can rephrase, uh, instead of having like a, a theorem telling us that um, the algebraically closed fields are the ones where the null cells has holds, we can make a definition instead. So this is kind of turning a statement into a property. So we say that a community ring L is said to be in null cell satsion if for any finitely generated L algebra, Call this A, for example. There is a map A to L. And since, since um, A is an L algebra, we already have some map from L to A, this structure map. Uh, so we can kind of think of this map as a retract of uh, the unit map in, in A. OK, so with this uh, rephrased definition of null stellensatz and objects, what are the uh, or what does the classical Nostalgian sets tell us? It tells us that the Nostalgian sets and objects in uh, the category of commutative rings um, is or uh, sorry, it um, it and the classical Nostalgian sets uh, classifies this uh, the Nostalgian sets and objects in commutative rings, and it says that the community ring. Uh, L is null sensation if and only if it's an algebraically closed field. Okay, so uh, this definition that we made of null sensation objects, we can generalize more to general categories. So uh, we have, uh, as I said, we have turned this theorem into a property, uh, kind of. Okay. So uh, which categories do we actually want to generalize this statement to? And um, in this uh, paper, then uh, chromatic null cell sets, we use categories in PRL. These are uh, presentable um, uh, infinity categories. Okay, 
And we say a non-terminal object, R is said to be um, null sensation if for all objects A, uh, and now we have to generalize the property of kind of um, being uh, not an algebra because we don't know we are in a, an, an algebra object situation, but an, um, an algebra over a ring is an object in the uh, under category of this algebra. So we use this under category construction. So uh, if we're all object A in the under category of, um, I call it R, and uh, we want this finitely generated condition as well. And finitely generated generalizes in the infinite category version to compact objects. So we have some uh, object A in the um, uh, category of compact objects over uh, R. Then there is a map from um, A to R. Okay, so this is the definition of being a Nullstellensatian object. It's the exact same as being a Nullstellensatian for community rings. If we here put and um, yeah, put uh, community rings, then we have that a community ring um, is said to be a Nullstellensatian. If we're all finitely generated algebras over that uh, ring, there or that field, sorry, uh, there is a map to the underlying field. This is exactly the same as this in this definition. Okay, so uh, some this uh, since this is a very new definition of thinking about multiple sets and objects in different categories, there are a lot of easy open questions or not easy but easy to state open questions in this situation because we don't know what multiple sets and objects are in basically any category except for uh, community rings and by using this paper, uh, community algebras in um, in T and local spectra. Okay, so Excuse what me. are uh, yeah? Uh, so the this compact object comes from this so finitely generated uh, uh, trait because in the category of community algebras, uh, so uh, this is said in the previous definition of compact object. Yes, so uh, not uh, all categories in PRL are compactly generated; they are presentable. So we reduce to this category of, of compact objects instead. Yeah, okay. I think at least. Um, if I'm wrong, then replace PRL with the, like uh, uh, cat infinity. <laughs> I think we're good. Okay. So uh, what are uh, the Nolten and Substion objects? Uh, so, so, sorry. Uh, yeah. What do you mean by uh, compactness uh, here? So. Uh, uh, yeah, so it, it's uh -huh. um, it uh, is an object that commutes with uh, with uh, with the infinite products, I think, or yeah, the hum into it commutes with infinite products. Um, but uh, think about it as okay. just a generalization of being finitely generated. So the okay. compact in community rings are the finitely generated community rings, for example, and the. Uh, Compact objects in spectra are the finite spectra. Yeah, thank you. If this helps. Okay, so uh, what are the nulls and Saltzian objects in, for example, uh, commutative algebras in spectra? Or just um, algebras in spectra? Wait. And we can even ask for like, um, in the... Um, since we know uh, the answer in community rings, but we don't even know the answer in rings. So what are like uh, non-commutative algebraically closed field objects? Uh, I don't know. Um, we can also ask in, uh, for example, commutative algebras in K and local spectra or algebras in K and local spectra. Or you can ask an even more general, like uh, for categorical things, like commutative algebras in catperf or something along these lines. There, are, yeah, you can just basically pick any category you want, um, and as you will see, all these have kind of the same flavor. These are like algebras or commutative algebra objects, uh, and I'll explain why that is the case. Uh, but you can choose kind of any uh, you want and 
it's an open question what the most level sensation objects are. Okay, so uh, what is the reason for all of these being like algebras or uh, commutative algebra objects? So, um, yeah, um, this is, uh, I'm going to use the definition that I'm not going to uh, say so much about. Um, it's like a technical condition. Let's see, be a, you know, it's what we call the weekly spectral category. And this essentially says that um, the um, zero object is a, or um, yeah, the zero object is a strict zero object. So, um, yeah, if you want the definition, um, it's just some technical requirement, um, then just look in the paper. So if you have a weekly spectral, spectral category, then any non-terminal object R has a map to a null Stellan object. So this is kind of what we, or why we want to know things about non Stellan objects, because we know that in these nice weekly spectral categories, then um, all objects map into some Null Sensatian objects. So if you can classify the Null Sensatian objects, then we can um, have more access to nice maps. Okay, so um, here's a, a proposition that allows us to know, at least in some cases, what um, some um, uh, weekly spectral categories are. So uh, we take um, a category in now PR, not PRL, but PR. Um, Ring, which stands for rigid. So these are uh, compactly generated uh, presentable infinity categories where the dualizables and the compacts are the same. So think, for example, uh, spectra is like the nice example. Okay, so if there exists an object uh, E in this category, uh, or a compact object, sorry, in this uh, category, generated the category under uh, tensor products. And call limits, call limits, and also duals because we want this to be like a rigid thing. Then this uh, category of commutative algebras over um, this E category is weakly spectral. And this is why um, kind of all of the examples I listed before were uh, were like commutative algebra objects. So examples uh, are, for example, uh, commutative algebras in spectra. And the category of spectra is generated uh, by the sphere spectrum. And uh, we have um, commutative algebras in uh, EN local spectra, which is generated by the EN local sphere. And we have this category that we're going to talk about for the rest of the, the, this talk, which is the category of TM local spectrum. And uh, SPT and, uh, SPTN is generated by um, something I'm just going to call uh, V for now. Um, and we're going to see what, what uh, V is. And we have a lot of choices for what we should be. Okay, so uh, let's construct this category of TN local spectra and see what this V object should be. So this, uh, for this, we need uh, to know what a, te a telescope is and what telescopic localization of spectra is. So uh, we start off with a definition, uh, a spectrum X in um, spectra and we, uh, to be, um, um, yeah, instead of working with all spectra, we work one prime at a time. So we take some um, prime and we localize spectra at P. And this is said to be of type N. If we tensor with uh, Morava K theory at height N, and tensor X is not zero, and KN, uh, or let me phrase it for KI, tensor X is zero for Uh, for i in between uh, zero and n minus one. If you have seen the um, the um, classification of thick subcategories in spectra, then uh, these type n uh, um, spectra are exactly the thing that makes uh, thick subcategories. Okay, so if we take some uh, type n spectrum, 
then x has a map from some shift of x um, to itself, such that uh, if we take this um, this um, Rava K theory and its homo associated homology theory, and we apply it to the map, then this is an isomorphism. And if we do this for any other i than n, then it is zero. So uh, these maps you might have heard about if you read some chromatic homotopy theory. They're called the VN self maps. And they're um, um, the way we construct this telescopic localization or telescopes. So how do we do that? We take x, some type n spectrum. Uh, with we know that it has a VN self map, uh, which we call F, and we define this spectrum TN uh, to be the um, how do I say this F telescope of X. And this is the collimate, um, so T and and we take just up, repeatedly apply this map F. We take X into like shift KX into shift 2KX, et cetera, et cetera. This is, this is map F. We just repeatedly apply the map F and then we take the call limit uh, over, over this, um, the amount of times we do that. And this we define to be the telescope. So we're kind of, yeah, the uh, kind of picture to have in mind maybe is take an object and you kind of uh, take the call limit along these these uh, telescopic uh, or this uh, self map, and you kind of get a telescope which kind of goes out of your object. Okay, so uh, just note that this construction is independent of the map F. Um, if you have any other uh, VN self map uh, F uh, prime then for some um, shift, like uh, say big N, this is um, uh, equivalent to, or homotopic to F. So once we go far enough into the, the call limit, then any V and self map uh, are the same. So we, uh, it doesn't matter which one we choose. Okay, this uh, spectrum, uh, TN, it defines a localization functor, uh, which we denote by LTN from spectra to spectra, whose essential image is this category of TN local spectra. And we have uh, inclusions um, of um, KN local spectra into TN local spectra into all um, P local spectra. So for example, if you know some nice uh, KN local object, then this is also TN local. For example, um, Morava K theory is TN local. Um, Morava E theory, or yeah, this is maybe Morava E theory and like Johnson Wilson theory. Um, they are all uh, TN local. And there is, um, uh, of course, a famous conjecture that these two categories are actually the same. And this is called um, um, the telescope conjecture. And um, yes, and um, yeah, I'm not going to say much about it, but uh, it um, it might be false. The, um, it seems to be the consensus that it's probably false. Okay. So uh, now we are entering uh, part three, the maybe the most uh, interesting and most relevant and actually going into the depths of this paper, uh, which is the null set and subs and objects in the commutative algebras in TN local spectra. So uh, before we constructed the category of TN local spectra by taking some type and spectrum X and taking some V and self map, um, and um, what I didn't say was uh, this category of TN local spectra is generated by any such uh, such spectrum X. We don't uh, necessarily need a specific choice. 
So it's generated by any um, any type n finite spectrum x. Ah, now I shouldn't have written v uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, just use x equals v, where this generated by a, a tensor product, call limits, and duals in. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's generated by um, some finite spectrum X, and uh, hence this category of commutative algebras in TN local spectra is weakly spectral, which means that any object R has a map into some null cell and satsun objects. And the goal of uh, uh, goal of the paper, or some part of the paper at least, is to classify all the null cell and satsun objects in uh, commutative algebras in TN local spectra. So um, how do they um, manage this and what do they actually prove? So uh, the theorem, um, which is maybe one of the main theorems in the paper, is that if we have some uh, commutative, algebras, uh, commutative algebra in TN local spectra, and it is a null and satsun object, then there is an algebraically closed field L and an equivalence between R and EN of L, where EN of L is the associated Lubin Tate theory. Okay, so um, how does uh, kind of this proof work and um, how, do, uh, how do they prove this? So the proof strategy is roughly, um, roughly consisting of two parts. Um, and the first one is to kind of create a Lubin Tate theory functor, uh, EN blank, and uh, try to um, make a small list of properties uh, such that we know exactly what uh, or which objects are um, in the image of this functor. Um, and then uh, the second uh, part is to check these properties for null and satsum objects. So we have some null and satsum ring um, or commutative algebra R. Then if we check this small list of properties, then we know it's in the essential image and there's an isomorphism to, to or an equivalent to some, um, some uh, EN of some of something, depends on how we define the functor, of course. But that gives us kind of the, the machine to, to know uh, which um, objects are in fact Lubin Tate theory objects. Okay. So uh, let's try to go to some um, some steps of this proof. And the first is this um, functor EN and the classification of Lubin Tate uh, theory objects. So uh, we fix a perfect field K and a formal group uh, G0 of height N over K. And uh, by the famous like uh, Gers Hopkin Miller, Lurie, um, or Gers Hopkin Miller, and generalized by Lurie, um, uh, this defines a Lubin Tate theory uh, called EN, or sometimes written ENK um, G. And the thing that um, the um, authors in this uh, chromatic null and sats paper. Uh, prove, or one of the things I prove, uh, is that we have a fully faithful functor, which is this uh, thing we're going to call Moraba E theories, uh, or not Moraba, yeah, Lubin Tate theories for, for different, um, different things. It's a functor EN blank from uh, perfect algebras over K to uh, commutative algebras in SPTN uh, and not only are there commutative algebras in SPTN but there are commutative algebras over uh, this um, this uh, ENK uh, guy and since we're going to be over uh, like uh, an algebraically closed field then any uh, formal group law over over it will uh, be uh, isomorphic. So we don't really care about this formal group law. Uh, so we're just going to call this like ENK. 
So uh, this functor lands in algebras over E and K, or this is not the, like, um, yeah, algebras over this. Uh, and in the paper, they have a kind of alternative um, notation for this category. It's usually written like C, Alge, E, and K with this hat thing. So if you see, read the paper and see this, this means this. And they have a list of, of notation in the beginning. Okay, so they create this uh, functor. It works nice. Um, and it's kind of uh, built on an earlier functor uh, by Lurie uh, called like spherical width, width vectors, if you have seen that uh, construction. It's in um, uh, the second elliptic homology paper uh, by Lurie. And um, in that paper, Lurie classifies the essential image of this spherical width vector functor. And uh, by using this uh, construction, they generalize this to, or they, um, Kind of specific specify this to these uh, Lubin-Tay theories. Um, so they prove that um, a TN local uh, E and K algebra, uh, that is something in this category. And they prove that it's, it's in the essential image of this functor, um, this functor E N blank. If um, So the homotopy groups of R, and I'm gonna say what this um, this means is is even periodic. If you have, um, uh, or I'm guessing you probably have seen the like a normal Morava K theory and the deformations of uh, or this universal deformation thing, and this is a uh, even periodic thing. And algebras over it will also be even periodic. So we at least need to have some uh, even periodicness. And second, uh, pi zero of R over M uh, is, um, is perfect. And uh, in Norwegian, we write perfect with a K, and in English, we write it with a C. Um, Okay, so uh, just what is this uh, R double dash uh, M thing? So uh, M here is an ideal that um, that comes from the uh, chromatic filtration of of um, of stable homotopy theory. So it comes from the chromatic filtration. And uh, uh, if you have some uh, Morava ether, for example, then this is uh, like uh, P comma V1 comma V2 blah, 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 up to uh, Vn minus one. It's sometimes come at call, I think, the land Weber ideal of the ring. And um, this double dash uh, thing uh, is just, yeah, it's a, um, kind of a weird construction, but uh, it has underlying spectrum. So the um, the underlying spectrum is um, is kind of like R over P tensor R over V one. So you uh, kind of separate all of the um, the generators for this uh, land verb ideal, and um, and you tensor R over it by one by one, and this is the underlying spectrum, and it has a, a kind of a um, more complicated ring structure, I think. Okay, so this is the essential image of the functor. It's exactly. Um, the rings are such that these two properties hold. So if we are able to check these for Nolstead and Satsun ring objects R, um, or yeah, commutative algebras, which are the infinity rings, um, then we know that there's an isomorphism to some, um, some Lubin-Tate theory. 
Okay, so uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll let R be a null standardization object in commutative algebras in T and local spectra. And we just check A and B. And to do this, uh, we have a really uh, powerful lemma that kind of gives us uh, this almost for free. Um, it, of course, involves an involved proof, a complicated proof in the paper. But um, but um, for now, just uh, we just uh, state this lemma. So uh, if there exists, um, um, yeah, kind of, these are called the really generalized more spectra. Uh, Vn of type n, uh, such that Vn tensor R is uh, even, then uh, R tensor V is even for any generalized more spectrum V. Uh, in particular, R itself is even. And also, if you take the, um, the pi zero of R double dash M, this is um, isomorphic to pi zero of R, and then modulo this ideal M. And uh, this further, this is an algebraically closed field. And uh, they prove that such um, such um, um, type uh, type N uh, more spectrum VN actually exists. So for any uh, null standardization ring R, we have such a ring object, and we have such a statement. So, um, okay, well, this gives us basically both of the two properties. If uh, R is a TN local and um, even periodic, um, okay. So what I'm uh, trying to say. So um, we know that every null cell and Sassian objects, there is some uh, generalized type more spectrum uh, such that they tensor to even, which means that R itself is even by the full, uh, previous uh, lemma. So if we take an uh, TN local even ring spectrum, then also R double dash M is TN local and even. So in particular, the homotopy groups are um, even periodic. And also, um, we know by the follow the, the previous lemma that um, pi zero of R double dash M is an algebraically closed field, and all all algebraically closed fields are perfect. So this means that uh, R is in the essential image of this uh, Lubin Tate uh, theory functor, and uh, we know precisely what, or we can say precisely what it is the image of, and it's pi zero of um, R double dash m so it's um in the image of a algebraically cross field so this was the statement we were after um like uh, any null cell and such objects there is an algebraically closed field l um and l is this this uh, field uh, pi zero r over uh, r double dash m and an equivalence to this associated lubin tate theory that was the, the theorem we were uh, trying to prove. Okay. And uh, I guess most of you have uh, seen like that one of the things they prove by um, this classification of Nolstead and Satson objects is exactly these, this uh, chromatic redshift uh, conjecture for E infinity rings. And uh, this is a really exciting part of the paper and is uh, perhaps why I like it the most. So, we briefly cover um, cover the proof of this as well. So what can we use it for? Um, they spend a considerable uh, amount of time in the paper uh, trying to, or not trying to, they construct um, a type of spectrum objects for, um, for rings, um, using these maps into Lubitate theory as their geometric points. And they prove a lot of nice theorems, generalizing facts from, um, from um, normal algebraic geometry. Um, and this is kind of a constructible spectrum. Uh, I'm not too familiar with algebraic geometry, so I'm, I won't um, uh, go much of into the, like, the details of this thing. Um, so uh, we're going to focus on the redshift instead, which is what I find maybe the most cool. So we can also prove uh, chromatic redshift. for infinite rings.
Okay, so uh, just um, uh, recall um, what we said earlier. Um, the category of commutative algebra objects in TN local spectra um, is a weakly spectral category. So we know that every um, object has a map into a null and satsun object. And now we have classified all of the null and satsun objects. We know these are the, the um, uh, Lubin-Tate theories as well as also the two algebraically closed fields. Um, hence, we know that for all T and local infinity rings, there is a map R to some Lubin-Tate theory. And uh, I want to stress that uh, the logic of um, kind of this is really backwards. Um, they prove this fact uh, early in the paper. It's the first main theorem. And they use this to deduce the rest of them. Um, so this is not the consequence of kind of the classification theorem. They prove the classification theorem by using this. Uh, but um, since I haven't explained all the details, um, we kind of uh, pretend that it follows and then we go from there. So just note that the log logic is backwards in, in this. Okay, so this is what we use to prove the redshift conjecture. So what does uh, chromatic redshift uh, actually say? Um, first of all, we have to know what uh, height is. So chromatic redshift says that if we take an infinity ring and we apply uh, K-theory, then this increases the height by one. So uh, what is height and how do we know it works well? And the first thing that uh, kind of uh, hints at the definition of height is a theorem by Hahn, uh, which says that uh, if we have a commutative algebra and spectra, uh, that is an infinity ring. So if it is uh, Tn local, or um, yeah, Tn acyclic, I mean, sorry, then also uh, it's, it's Tn plus one acyclic. So this kind of means that um, any uh, um, and the algebra is kind of supported on a finite chromatic range, or any yeah, any infinite ring is kind of supported on a finite chromatic range from zero to to n. And if it's some uh, eventually zero, then it's zero for every height above this. So every t n plus i localization after this is gonna be zero. And uh, using the um, earlier results of this paper, we can now prove this uh, as a color only, but uh, note that uh, Han's original proof is uh, is um, more involved and is uh, different than this one. Okay, so we want to prove that um, that uh, Tm plus Ltm plus one of R is zero. So we assume uh, that it is not. And uh, since it's not zero, then we know it is um, Tn plus one local, which means there is a map from R into some um, height n plus one Lubin theory over an algebraically closed field L. L. Um, and this map induces a map Tn locally. So Ltn E. To Lt. Okay, so um, by assumption, um, yeah, how do I say this? Okay, uh, this uh, LTN of uh, EN plus one of L, this is non zero. And this is a kind of a um, sometimes sometimes called like a transchromatic phenomena. Yeah, and this, this is part of like transchromatic homotopy theory, which is kind of mixed height homotopy theory. You don't just focus that one height; you uh, look at things that. Are, uh, kind of live in multiple heights at once in some way. And since uh, EN plus one lives in lives in height N, and if you TN localize, you uh, make it live in uh, height N, then this is kind of a mixed mixed thing. 
Uh, yeah, but anyways, uh, this is uh, non-zero. And by assumption, uh, this is zero. So the zero ring, LT and R. Um, and the zero ring uh, admits no non-zero modules. And here we have the zero ring and a map uh, into some non-zero ring, um, which makes LTN, EN uh, plus one of L into a module over zero, which can't happen unless it was zero, but we have proven that it wasn't. Hence the assumption is false and LTN plus one of R is uh, non-zero. So the important fact to mem memorize here is, is maybe that the zero ring only has uh, zero as a module. It has no non-zero modules. And this is an important fact that is used uh, several times, both in this paper and, for example, in the work of Han and, um, and um, the things leading up to this paper, essentially. OK, so what does, um, um, yes. So this uh, is what allows us to define the concept of height uh, in some meaningful way. So uh, the height of a infinity ring, uh, infinity ring spectrum is defined as the maximum over n of n such that if you tn localize, then it is non-zero. And since we know it's supported uh, at a, um, if it's zero uh, for some n, then it's zero for everything above. So this maximum thing makes sense. So the definition makes sense. Okay, so what does the chromatic redshift conjecture say? And this was conjectured by Asanya and Rognes. Um, so uh, we let R be a height n in infinity ring spectrum. Then it's uh, algebraic K theory uh, as a spectrum. And this is also an infinity ring spectrum. So it makes sense to define its height as well. And this is exactly n plus one. So uh, algebraic K theory uh, takes the uh, height n things to height n plus one things. Okay. So uh, how do we prove this? Um, we use uh, an earlier result by, by uh, Alan Yuan, the third author also of this paper, which uh, proves that uh, Murawa E theory or Lubin Tate theory uh, has um, or satisfies this chromatic uh, redshift. So uh, there is a map EN to some, um, some um, infinity ring spectrum A, where A um, uh, A is an infinity ring. It has height n, and its k theory has height n plus one. So it uh, has a map into something that satisfies the um, the chromatic redshift, and uh, this A is kind of a, a weird object. Is the uh, KN localization of height n plus one uh, Murawa E theory, and you take its um, Tate construction uh, with this the um, uh, cyclic group of order p. But you take the Tate construction with a um, the trivial action. So this is kind of a of a. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you take this trivial action, making it like it into a, a spectrum with an action, um, and then this is not enough still. So you take something that's called a strict Henselization at some prime ideal p, and um, the idea is that this is sort of um, uh, yeah, e n plus one has height n plus one. You take its state construction with the trivial action by CP. This shifts the uh, height down to n, and this is sometimes called like blue shift. Uh, and then um, strict tensorization doesn't increase the, um, the the order or increase the height, uh, but it's kind of uh, you can't have a map into this thing by itself, but it's a map up to a finite sequence of tallest extensions or something along those lines. And uh, this is just words, of course, it doesn't mean much, uh, but it's there is in fact a map into this um, this object. And uh, this thing has uh, height n 
and its k-theory you can prove has height n plus one. Okay, um, so uh, we have a map uh, into A. This induces a map on um, T and local K theory. So we have an induced map on T and K of E and L. Okay, we can write this maybe a bit more nicer. to this uh, L, T, and K of A. And um, by Yuan, we know that uh, K of A is height uh, N plus one, uh, which, um, oh, uh, this is supposed to be L N plus one, of course. Um, yeah, we know that uh, K of A has height uh, n plus one, uh, so this is non-zero. Uh, and as we said before, uh, only the zero or the zero ring can't have any non-zero modules. Um, hence, this also has to be zero. So this means that these um, Lubin-Tay theories or Morava e theories uh, they satisfy chromatic redshift. And this we can use to prove redshift for everything. Now that we know that we have maps into Moravia or these Lubin-Tay theories, so uh, if you have some height and uh, t and local infinity spectrum, infinity ring spectrum, uh, then we know that we have a map uh, into um, into some um, Lubin-Tay theory for some algebraically closed field L. This induces a map L t n plus one. K of R to Lt n plus one K of E n of L, and by the former um, thing we just uh, looked at, we know that this is non-zero because K E n L has height uh, n plus one, and since the um, the zero ring can't have non-zero modules, exactly the same arguments as before, we know also that this has to be um, non-zero. And uh, this means that, uh, in addition, you can kind of prove this if, um, uh, let me see. Yeah, since um, what am I trying to say? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, we have taken some uh, height and infinity ring spectrum. We have taken its K theory, and we have proved that uh, its TN plus one localization is non zero which means it's height n plus one. And this is um, this is proves the chromatic redshift for any E infinity ring spectrum R. Okay. Um... I think I've uh, talked uh, long enough and there's a lot of uh, technical details here, of course, that I have, uh, have admitted. Um, yeah, I uh, really recommend trying to read through the paper. It's a, it's, a, it's nicely written and it's a fun one um, and important, but it's of course technical. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't think I have more to say than that. So thank you for, um, sharing an hour on your Saturday weekend with me, uh, learning some mathematics. And yeah, thanks. Yeah. Let's tag Berger uh, again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the talk. Thanks. By the way, uh, I was wondering if you can maybe talk a bit about decent or the decent in theory. Sorry, can I say that again? Um, can you talk a bit about uh, decent? Uh, I know very little about um, and there's yeah. K theory is not one of my specialties. Um, it's uh, in my opinion kind of like it's very complicated stuff and uh, I don't uh, I'm sorry to say I don't know much about um, about this Gala descent for K theory. Thanks again.
Yeah, just video. So maybe they will stop recording now. Mm -hmm.